This is a graphing problem where we're supposed to sketch a graph of a continuous function called f with the following properties. Now notice the properties that were given about f or regarding f have to do with the first and second derivative only. So the first derivative is positive over the intervals minus infinity to minus 4 and 2 to infinity and f prime is negative over the interval from minus 4 to 2. f double prime is less than 0 or negative over the interval from minus infinity to 1 and f double prime is positive over the interval from 1 to infinity. So when we do this picture, we, we have to do it in stages because we have so many intervals to think about. We have to think about, okay, on that interval, what is f supposed to be doing based on what f prime or f double prime is doing? All right, so let me sketch a set of axes here. And I'm going to take note of the numbers that are important. So it looks like here, negative 4, that interval is important, so I need to tick off negative 4. Label it. 2 is important, so I'm going to tick off 2. And then I notice here, negative 1 is important, so I'll have that written there as well. Label my axes, x-axis, f of x-axis. There we go. Now I'm going to be thinking about each interval on its own. So that I have one, two, three, four, five intervals I have to think about. So I'm going to start with this interval here, because it's the first one, minus infinity to minus four. Now f prime is positive over that interval. That means what about f? Well, if f prime is positive, that means the slopes of f are positive. That means that it's going to be increasing, that f is going to be increasing. So I'm just going to sketch a little mark that shows that f is increasing there. From 2 to infinity, I have the same thing happening. So from 2 to infinity, I'm going to start again. Start at the lower end when you're increasing and go up. It keeps things nice in line. Now, from minus 4 to 2, this, this one right here in the middle, from minus 4 to 2, it says that f prime is less than 0. So um, if f prime is less than 0, that means f prime is negative. That means the slopes of f are negative. That means that f has to be decreasing. So I'm going to start decreasing from the top left and go down to the bottom right. So you can kind of see a shape of the graph right there, you know, it's sort of there. However, we still have to deal with this other interval. So from minus infinity to minus 1, we got this guy right here. We have f double prime being less than zero. So if f double prime is less than zero, that means that f is concave down. If your double prime is negative, your original function is concave down. So I have concave downness happening all along till here. Okay, I'm just taking notes and you can see that if I hadn't drawn this in straight lines, that it would have been concave down, so that's good news. Now from 1 to infinity, I have f double prime being greater than 0. Look at the right spot, <laughs> Patty. <laughs> f double prime being greater than 0. So that means that f itself is concave up. Alright, so you can kind of see how everything's fitting together. So I got a concave down piece, concave up piece. So along this interval, I'm increasing and concave down. Along this interval, I'm incre decreasing and concave down. Then I continue to decrease, but I'm concave up until here. Then I increase and I'm concave up. Now I want to translate this into a nice pretty graph up here. And we don't have to worry about where we put it vertically because we don't have any other information to tell us where to put it. So it's going to have the same characteristics no matter where we put it vertically. All right, so I know up until negative 4, I have to be increasing and concave down. After negative 4 to negative 1, I'm decreasing and concave down. From negative 1 to 2, I'm decreasing and concave up. And from 2 to infinity, I'm increasing and concave up. Now the placement of this here as a 0 or an x-intercept it was an accident. So don't be thinking that all oh, the inflection points had... No. That's a complete accident where that ended up because remember I told you it doesn't matter vertically where you put it. 
So now the last thing says label the local max, local min, and inflection points and label their x coordinates. Make sure when you do problems that you read the whole thing and you answer all the questions. Always go back in the end and say, did I answer all the questions? Quit being in a hurry. Okay, so here at negative four, it looks like I have a complete hill. So that's a local max. And that occurs at x equal negative four since I have to label x coordinates. This right here is my local min. It's a complete valley. That's the lowest point in that neighborhood. So this is a local min at x equal 2. And then here in the middle, that's my inflection point. Notice the concavity changes from concave down to concave up. That's my inflection point. And I'm label it x equal minus 1. So I believe I've completed the entire problem and have created a graph of f that has all of these characteristics.